In today's episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the Teddy Bear Crochet Poncho, a free pattern that's available at yarnspirations.com. My name is Brittany and I teach over at Be Hooked Crochet and I'm really excited to collaborate with my friends at Yarnspirations to teach you how to crochet this adorable poncho. Well go ahead and download your free pattern from Yarnspirations.com, grab your hooks and yarn, and let's see how to make this teddy bear poncho. We're going to begin this pattern in the lower front corner. So we're basically going to be crocheting this from one side to the next. And our foundation chain number is going to vary depending on the size that you're making. So this pattern is available in three different sizes. I will be making the smaller of the three. So I'm going to start off with 62 foundation chains. Now if you're working on one of the other sizes, I would recommend downloading the free pattern from yarnspirations.com and you can get the foundation chain number and you can work that out with the size that you want to make. Once you have your foundation chain that you need, I recommend that you count as you go along. You do want to make sure that your stitch count is right in order for our pattern to work out. But as you can see with really fuzzy yarn like this, we have very low stitch definition. So you can count the chains, but it's quite difficult to do that. So if you're unsure of the number of chains that you made, maybe you rip back and try again and just try to make sure you really focus in on that count to make sure you have the proper number. So we're going to dive in now to row number one. And the first thing we need to do is find the second chain from the hook. So we can see that the V that we can sort of see through the fuzz that that's right next to their hook. That's the first chain. And we're going to skip over to the next one right after that and insert your hook into the chain. Typically, I would recommend working in the back bump or in two loops. But in the case of low stitch definition yarn, just do what you can do. We're going to make a single crochet into that second chain from the hook. And then we're going to find the chain after that and double crochet into that. Now here I'm working with just the side loop of the chain. I find that to be a little bit easier to see. So I, if I really focus in, I can see the V of the next chain and it's just easy to see and catch that top loop. So the stitch pattern for row number one is just alternating single crochets and double crochets. And that's actually going to be the stitch pattern throughout, but we're setting up our foundation here and we really want to make sure that we're just keeping track of what we're doing. Single crochet, then double crochet, then single crochet, and keep going because again, low stitch definition yarn, it makes it a, a lot easier to see what we've worked. So we can sort of tell the height difference between the two, but it's just a little bit easier if you keep track of things. And we're gonna repeat that stitch count until we get to the end of the row. Now, once you've made it to the end of your row, you should end on a single crochet. That's sort of your visual cue to let you know that things are on the right track and that our pattern moving forward will continue to go as planned. So I mentioned before that the stitch repeat is the same throughout most of this pattern. We're going to alternate single crochet and double crochets, but we are starting them a little bit different. So we actually have a two row pattern repeat. We're moving on now to row number two. And what we want to do is chain three and turn our work. And that chain three is counting as a double crochet. So the next stitch we're going to make is a single crochet because we are still alternating from row to row. The hardest part here is figuring out where to work your stitch. So the chain three that we're counting as a stitch is coming from right here. If you turn your work from the side, and this is my best tip for working with this particular stitch pattern with this fuzzy yarn, it's harder to see the V's up at the top. If that's what you're used to and you can see it, that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, look at it from the side and you can see little indentions. 
And those are the stitches. So the first indention is right here, but our chain three counts as a stitch, so we can't work our single crochet there. So I'm gonna jump over until I see that next indention right here and make a single crochet there. And we're alternating again, so we're gonna double crochet, look for that next indention. Then find your next stitch and single crochet. And that's the repeat for row number two. The difference between row number two and row number three is how we started. So just pay attention to that. We started this row with a chain three. We're gonna start our next row with a chain one. And then that's gonna be our repeat for the majority of our pattern. We're gonna work one side and then we'll do some shaping for the neck and then we'll finish up the, the last section and the hood. But for now, go ahead and finish working up row two. And then we'll meet back up at the end of this row and we'll talk about row number three. Once you've made it to the end of row number two, your last stitch is going to be a double crochet. So we started row number two with the chain three, we ended with a double crochet. Just keep that in the back of your mind. That's gonna help you moving forward to sort of memorize the pattern. Now we're moving on to row number three and we're gonna start this row by making one chain and turning our work. And then we're going to single crochet in the first stitch. So technically we're not counting the chain one as a stitch, but we're making a stitch here. So I'm just finding that first indention or that first stitch and single crocheting there. And then I'm gonna move on with my pattern. I'll make a double crochet in the next stitch, which you can see the little indention there. And then I'll single crochet in the next stitch and this is my same alternating pattern. So one of the things you may notice, and you can start to see the texture take shape. Well, if you get distracted or you have to set your work down and you don't really remember where you left off, well, one of the things that can help guide you is to look at the row below, and that's gonna tell you what stitch you need to make. So I'm specifically pointing out these big bumps that you see here. What those are is the double crochet from the previous row being scrunched down because the single crochets are shorter. So whenever you find one of those bumps, you're supposed to single crochet. And then right next to that, you can sort of see like the indention, the, the little dent that's in between the two bumps. That's where we're going to make a double crochet. So technically what we're doing here is we are double crocheting in the single crochets and we're single crocheting in the double crochets. Now when you made it to the end of row number three, our last stitch is going to be a single crochet and it's gonna be worked in our chain three. So that's what this is sticking out right here. And just a little tip that I like to use, instead of making my single crochet in the third chain, I'm actually single crocheting in the second chain. And that's just to help close up the little gap that we see because the chain three is so long. So I'm just single crocheting in the second chain rather than the third. And then we're ready now to move on with the pattern. So what we need to do now is crochet up a significant part of our poncho. We're gonna repeat rows two and three until our poncho measures a certain length. And we're gonna find that in the written instructions. Since there are three different sizes, there are three different lengths that we're targeting. I'm gonna work until mine measures 10 inches because I'm working on the smaller of the three sizes. So you're just gonna start your measurement at the foundation edge here and then work the pattern until it measures that target length. So at this point, just go ahead and finish up that repeated section. And then when we meet back up, we'll talk about the neck shaping. 
Well, once we've finished that big significant repeat there, our work looks something like this. We've got just really a big giant rectangle and we're ready to start for the next shaping. So what we've done here is we worked up one half of the poncho and then we're gonna work on the neck. We're gonna start in like a shorter section, work it up on one side and then we're gonna join the yarn and work up the other side and then finish the other half of the poncho. So the pattern told us to stop on a wrong side row and the wrong side row is a row two. So that's where we started with a chain three and then we ended with a double crochet at the end of that row. So I've just turned my work and the next instruction is to work in pattern for a certain number of stitches and that's the first row of the next shaping. The number of stitches is going to depend on the size that you're making. So since I'm working on the smaller size, I will be working in pattern for 24 stitches. So the first thing I want to do is chain one because I'm just following along with the pattern. So after we do that row where we chain three, then the next row we chain one. So I'm just following the stitch pattern as shown for the third row. The only difference here is that I'm working 24 stitches instead of going all the way across the row. All right, so once we have those number of stitches worked, 24 in my case, we are gonna make a half double crochet two together. And this is going to start shaping the neck a little bit. And to do that stitch, we just need to wrap the yarn around the hook. We'll find our next stitch. Just insert your hook in there, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then leave that there. Now yarn over again, insert your hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're gonna pull through all of these loops that are on our hook. So what we do with this stitch is we work those two stitches into one. So we've decreased by one. And the way that you'll see this take shape is it's gonna sort of curve in a little bit. So this is a very standard stitch for a neck shaping line. Now we're going to leave the rest of the stitches over here unworked. We're just going to continue working on this little shoulder section next. So we're moving on now to row number two of the next shaping and we're going to chain two and then turn our work. And we need to half double crochet two together. So just keep in the back of your mind that we're always going to be working that stitch along this edge here for the decreasing and for the shaping. So I'm just going to wrap my yarn, find my first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all of those loops. And then we're going to continue in pattern until we get to the end of the row. Now you do have to do a little bit of investigation to keep things consistent. So you probably are pretty familiar with the stitch pattern because we've worked up this large section and we're always making a double crochet in the single crochets and we're making a single crochet in the double crochets. So I'm just looking at my next stitch here. So my half double crochet two together ended in this single crochet here. So that means I need to make a single crochet in my next stitch because that next stitch is a double crochet. And then just continue with your pattern until you get to the end of the row with that alternating single crochets and double crochets. So for row number three, we ended with a double crochet on that previous row. So that means we need to chain one and turn our work. So the pattern will just say pattern to last two stitches. It doesn't really specify how you're supposed to start it. You kind of just have to look at your work and compare that with the stitch pattern that we worked for the majority of this large section here. So we are just making one chain we're gonna single crochet in that first stitch. So where that chain one is coming from. 
and that's going to be our first stitch. So from here we're going to just work in pattern until we get to the last two, then we're going to half double crochet two together. So I'm just starting with that single crochet, double crocheting in the next stitch, and single crochet, and just use all the visual cues that you have come up with from, from this point on to help you throughout this little section of the pattern. Now once you've made it to the end of this row, it's really easy to get confused with that half double crochet two together and figuring out what your last two stitches are. So just find your chain two, which is pretty easy to find. It's just sticking out here right on the side. And then directly beneath that is the half double crochet two together. And then we can find our last stitch. If we just rotate it over on the top, you can sort of see the V through this fuzzy yarn. And then of course the one right before it that we can see pretty clearly there is our last, uh, the second to last stitch. So I'm going to make my half double crochet two together over these last two stitches to finish up this row. And when you do that, you can see that it's a little bit cleaner. The stitches sort of just go right together really nicely and have a nice clean edge. So with that, we, we've worked all three rows to the next shaping. So we have our first row, second row, we've just finished the third row, and the pattern says that we need to repeat the last two rows, so rows two and three, two more times. And it will also give you the stitch count at the end. So we are decreasing by one stitch every single row, and you'll just want to refer to your written instructions and just count as you go along. It's going to make sure that you're on the right track. If you're off and it's not too big of a deal, if you're off by one stitch or two, honestly, with this yarn, it's really forgiving because it is so fuzzy. So if you do have a mistake, honestly, I would probably just leave it. If your stitch count is off, I wouldn't worry about it. So go ahead and work up those last two rows two more times, then work one row even in pattern where we're not decreasing, and then we're going to pick up right after that. Now once we finish that repeat, our work looks something like this, and we're not going to fasten off. We can just go ahead and pull up a long loop and drop that with our hook, and we're going to pick up now on the other side. So you're going to refer to your pattern to get that certain number of stitches. I have my hook in here so that I know exactly where to fasten on. You'll just go ahead and create a slip knot and place that loop on your hook and just pull it through the stitch and then chain two. So again, we're not counting this chain two as a stitch. And then we're going to half double crochet two together right off the bat here. So we're, we are going to work in the same space as our chain two, so in that same stitch to work our half double crochet two together and then jump over into the next stitch. And then we're going to continue in pattern until we get to the end of the row. So just take a look at what your next stitch is. It's a double crochet for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and single crochet into that stitch. And the pattern will tell you to just continue in pattern until you get to the end of the row. So we're going to alternate single crochets and double crochets until we get to the end of this first row. Now once you get to the end of that row, we're just going to turn our work and continue in pattern until we get to the last two stitches, then we'll half double crochet two together. And we're kind of just breezing through these because these two rows, rows number two and three, are repeat from what we did on the other side. Now to figure out what stitch you need to work first on this next row, because the instructions just say pattern to last two stitches, just look at the last stitch that you made. For me, it was a single crochet, and it may vary from size to size. And then you're going to do the opposite. So I ended with a single crochet. That means I'm gonna start with a chain three. And then I'm gonna single crochet in the next stitch and double crochet in the next. And I'm gonna repeat single crochet and double crochet until I get to the end of the row. When I get to those last two stitches, we'll half double crochet two together. Then once you made it to the end of that row, we're gonna jump into the third row for the next shaping over here on this side. And that's where we're going to half double crochet two together is how we're gonna start the row. 
and then we're going to continue in pattern until we get to the end of the row. So like we did over on the other side, we're going to repeat those last two rows, rows two and three, two more times, followed by one row where we work even in pattern, and we're going to pick back up right after that. Okay, so I have now finished that second little repeat there. So I have both of my little shoulder sides ready to go. I've got my neck shaping here. And now what we need to do is join these two sides together. We're going to start off on the next row where we're going to join and kind of close up that neck hole. So the first thing we want to do is chain three. And then we're just going to work in pattern until we get to the end here. So I'm just looking at my work and making my single crochet in that next stitch. And I'm following along with the pattern. Yours may be a little bit different depending on the size that you're working with. So whenever it says continue working in pattern, just look at your work and remember that we're always making a single crochet in the doubles and a double in the single crochets. So that should help you have some visual cues to get you going. So I've made it now to the end of my shoulder section here. I've just treated that half double crochet like the next stitch. Now from here, we're going to make a chain. So we need to chain 23 and that's going to bridge the gap in between the two spaces. Now I'm going to do my best to make sure this chain isn't twisted and stretch it over that gap. Find your half double crochet two together and I'm going to single crochet into that stitch. Now you can go ahead and look ahead at the stitches that you have so you know exactly what stitch you need to be worked. Just remember we're single crocheting in the double crochets and we're double crocheting in the single crochets. And then we're just going to continue in pattern until we get to the end of our row. Now once we've made it to the end of that row, we're just going to take a stitch marker and mark this last row. This is going to be a visual cue for us so we can measure this next repeat. So at this point now what we need to do is just work our pattern as we have already done it so many times before. In this section, we're just going to duplicate basically this large piece over on this side here. So the next thing we're going to do is just continue in pattern all the way across. We're going to treat the chains just as if they were a regular stitch. We're going to just work our stitch pattern through there all the way until we get to the end of the row. The pattern does give you the specific stitch counts if you are wanting to check that to make sure that you're on the right track. But we're basically just going to work the same pattern that we did in this first section here so that we're duplicating this side over there. So that's what I need for you to do at this point now. Go ahead and work up your second side to the poncho. We'll meet back up after that and we'll talk about those finishing touches. So what I've done off camera here is I have finished crocheting the back side of my poncho and when you fold it in half right here where we added this new section, it needs to be the same length as the front. So it does measure a little bit longer because we have a little bit of extra length here for the, the neck shaping. So once that matches, we can go ahead and fasten off. Now the next thing we're going to do is start working on the hood. And what I've done here is I have marked the center five stitches from the opening here at the neck. So you want to take two stitch markers and count out five stitches that are here in the center. We're going to fasten on at this stitch marker here and start working around. And then this is like our stopping point here. So to add our new yarn, we're just going to make a slip knot and just insert your hook in the same stitch as your marker there. Pull up a loop and then we'll chain one just to secure it. And what we want to do is just work a solid row of single crochet. We're going to do that because we're 
going to sort of finish up these little edges here. We don't really have stitches to work into like the V's along the sides here. So we're just going to clean things up. Now go ahead and make a single crochet in the same stitch as your chain one. So that is actually going to be our first single crochet of the round. And here are the next few stitches we actually do have V's to work into. So I'm just going to work those very quickly. And the pattern does give us the number of stitches that we need to have all the way around. So we're going to have to space them evenly. You may have to play around a little bit to find that perfect number as we're just adding stitches through the next spot here. But the target number that I'm looking for is 65. So I'm just going to count as I go. And when I get to this little section here, I'm just going to do my best to work my stitches along the edge. There's really no perfect formula here. It's all about whatever looks good. That's the goal here. So I've worked just one stitch and a single crochet. That tends to be the best outcome there. And when we have a, like a chain three like we have here, I'm gonna make two in this space. And that's gonna help fill that gap a little bit more. And then the next one should be a single crochet. So I'm just gonna work my hook in there and single crochet. And just keep going with that. Once you get to this back section, it's nice and easy because we have stitches to work into. And just count as you go because it is a little bit more difficult to see the stitches and count them after the fact. So work your first round when you get to your second stitch marker. That's where we're gonna stop. We're looking now at the next row instructions under the hood. And what we need to do is chain one, and then I'm gonna turn my work, and I'm going to single crochet in this first stitch. So we're not changing anything with our stitch pattern here. It's just giving you a starting point. It's saying, okay, we're gonna start our stitch repeat with the single crochet. So then that means the next stitch, we're gonna double crochet. And then the next stitch, we're gonna single crochet. And you've got the rest from here on out. You're pretty familiar with this pattern. So once we have that first row out of the way, we need to grab a stitch marker and we're going to mark what is the center stitch here on the back piece. So here's the opening, the front, this is the back. We need to place a stitch marker there because we need to have a point of increase. And this is gonna be our visual cue to let us know that, hey, we need to increase on that stitch. So you can count the stitches if you would like, but honestly, it's not too big of a deal. Just go ahead and eyeball what you think looks to be the center stitch and place your stitch marker there. That way, when we start working the next row, when you get to this stitch, you'll know that that is the stitch that you need to increase in. So on that last row we worked, we started with a chain one and a single crochet. So that means we're gonna start this row with a chain three to count as our double crochet. So we're just continuing in pattern, which is exactly what the written instructions say to do, but it doesn't tell you that this is the row you need to start with. You just have to kind of realize that that's how the pattern works at this point. So we'll find the next stitch, we'll single crochet, and then we're just continuing our normal pattern, double crochet in the next, followed by a single crochet, and we're gonna repeat that until we get to our stitch marker. When we get to our stitch marker here, we wanna make three stitches in this one stitch. That's gonna be increasing by two stitches. So we're going to do that, and the stitch is gonna depend on where you placed your marker. So it looks like for me, I've placed my marker in a single crochet, so that means I'm gonna make three double crochets there. You'll just look at your work, figure out what stitch you just made, or what stitch your, your stitch marker is in, and then you're gonna do the opposite three times for that particular stitch. Then once you do that, replace your stitch marker in the middle stitch because we are gonna to continue to use that same placement to increase a little bit later on after we've worked a few more rows. And then you'll just finish up this row. We'll meet back up at the end of this row. All right, now I'm at the end of this row. Since my first stitch was a chain three, which counted as a double crochet, that means my last stitch is going to be a double crochet as well. And then the last thing I'll point out here is that I made three double crochets in my center stitch. I replaced my stitch marker 
in the middle stitch. That way I know that this is always going to be my point of increase as I keep moving forward. Well, the instructions say that we're going to work a pretty significant repeat now at this point. What we're going to do is continue in pattern for three rows and then we're going to increase on the fourth row and that means specifically at this stitch marker. Then we're gonna do that again. We're gonna work three rows in pattern and then increase on the fourth. Now, if you are keeping track of your stitch count, we are increasing by six stitches total. So you can count as you go just to make sure you're on the right track. But once we finish these next eight rows, then all we're going to do is continue in pattern until our hood measures a certain length. And that's, that length is size dependent. So for me, it's eight inches. And I'm just gonna start measuring here where I joined it. Now, just to clarify one last time what continue in pattern means, well, that's just our standard repeat. So this last row that we worked, we started with the chain three. That means the next row, we're gonna start with the chain one. And then the row after that, we're gonna start with the chain three and so on. So we're just alternating the way we start and end each row. We're alternating single crochet and double crochet. And then don't forget that we're going to increase in this stitch on those fourth rows. So what I need for you to do at this point is finish crocheting the entire length of the hood. Shouldn't take you too much longer. Then the last thing we'll do is seam up the edge of the hood so it's actually functional. And then we're gonna add the ears. So once your hood measures the proper length, we can go ahead and fasten off. We're just going to seam it up. So leave yourself a tail that's about 12 inches or so and we'll use that tail to tie them together. So I'm just pulling that tail through the loop to fasten that off. Now the next thing you wanna do is turn it inside out. Then we're just gonna thread the tail on our darning needle. And the first thing we need to do is join it to the other side. So just pull that through. And what I'm gonna do is just use a whip stitch to seam the two ends together. And I wanna make sure that I'm catching each stitch on each side. So I'm matching it up so that it will be even on the other side. And if you feel like you need some help with that, if it starts to shift or anything like that, you can always use one of those, one of these stitch markers here, the locking stitch markers. They work a lot like a, a pin too. So you can sort of pin the, the two sides together and you're just gonna make one stitch one whip stitch for every crocheted stitch that we have across. Now once we have that seam sewn up, we can just go ahead and weave in the rest of this tail. And this yarn being so fuzzy is very forgiving. You really just need to run it under some stitches, it doesn't have to be perfect, it actually works out a little bit better if it's not perfect. And I just go forward in one direction for an inch or two and then work back in the other direction. And just keep going back and forth two or three times before you trim it off. So we have several tails that we need to weave in. So this is really just one of them. And what I'll need for you to do before we move on is finish weaving in the tails for the rest of your poncho. The last thing we're gonna talk about are the ears. Now, once we have everything sewn together, we have the ends all woven in. This is what our, our poncho looks like at this point. And there's just one finishing touch that we need to do. And that is of course, to crochet the ears. So let's see how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is create a slip knot. Place that loop on our hook, and then go ahead and chain four. Now locate that first chain that you made, the one that's right next to your slip knot. We're gonna work 11 double crochet into that chain. And the three chains that we're skipping are going to count as a double crochet. So we'll have a total of 12 stitches at the end of this first round.
Now once you have your 11 double crochet, we can go ahead and find our chain three. We're gonna join with a slip stitch to the third chain. And that's gonna finish off round one. Now for round two, we're going to chain three, which is gonna count as a double crochet. And then we're gonna make a double crochet in the same space that our chain three is coming from. And then we just wanna make two double crochets into every stitch. So at the end of this round, we'll have 24 stitches. Now when you finish that row, you're gonna find your chain three and join with a slip stitch there. And then what we want to do is fold our ear in half. Before we move on, I'm actually going to just stick my hook through the center here and pull my tail outward. I'm gonna use that to sew it onto the hood in just a little bit. Now pick up that chain one, your loop there, and we're going to work in single crochets to join the two sides together. And we're gonna make sure that we catch both sides as we're working into the stitches. And we're going to work two single crochet in the first double crochet. So just work it one side at a time. Catch that stitch, catch the stitch on the other side, and work a single crochet. And then just repeat that. Now make one single crochet into each of the next two. And then two single crochets in the next. Then we're just going to repeat that three more times. We'll have a total of 16 stitches here and that should get us to the end of the row. Once you've made it to the end of that row, we're just gonna chain one and turn our work and make one single crochet in each stitch and then we're gonna fasten off. The last thing you wanna do is just place your ear on the hood and you're just gonna sew it down. Take your darning needle, one of the ends, and just whip stitch it to the hood. You of course need to make your second ear and stitch that one in place too. Now the very last thing you'll need to do is pick out four of your favorite buttons and you're going to sew them in place on each side to create the armholes. Now these buttons won't actually function, so you're just gonna sew them in place. Just sew them from one side to the next. That's gonna create the armhole up here and it's gonna help the poncho stay on. So you'll just do that for both sides and then your poncho's done.